Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft All-Purpose Oil and Liquid Shortening, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. The Kraft folks have done it again. New Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening is making a real hit in American kitchens. New Kraft oil is specially blended, so it's exactly right for every cooking and salad use. Perfect for all deep frying and pan frying. Perfect for every kind of homemade salad dressing. The perfect liquid shortening for any baking recipe. Get New Kraft oil at your grocer's tomorrow. New Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Well, let's see what's doing in Summerfield. People who know the great Gildersleeve don't think it too unusual that tonight his car is parked in front of the women's club. As a matter of fact, he's made arrangements to pick up the attractive school principal, Miss Irene Henshaw... So here he is with his motor running. <laughs> yeah, I wish they'd break up the meeting. My engine's getting hot. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have drained the antifreeze. It's almost June. <laughs> well, here she comes. Yeah, Irene has such a graceful walk. <laughs> Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Irene. You tired waiting? Well, I never like to be kept waiting to see you. That's very nice. Oh, this is the most uncomfortable seat. Is something wrong with this cushion? Well, I need new upholstery. The spring came untied on that end. Oh. You better sit over here close to me. <laughs> you didn't untie it, did you? <laughs> Shall we take a little spin? I think you'd better take me home. It was a long meeting. Oh, what were you women talking about? We were discussing the candidates we'd support in the elections this year. Oh? You know, it's the strangest thing. Nobody's running for sheriff. Not even Sheriff Nicholson? He's retiring. Well, Nick's had it quite a while. He's used up a lot of silver polish on that badge of his. Hmm. We need a sheriff who is young and vigorous, a strong personality. True. A crusader. Someone who isn't afraid to turn the spotlight into dark places. He's speaking of spotlights, there's a big moon tonight. Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve, have you any idea what I'm talking about? Sure, you're looking for a sheriff, one with a big spotlight. <laughs> oh. oh, now be serious. The sheriff's office is a great opportunity for somebody. As a matter of fact, you might well consider it yourself. Me? Sheriff? Why not? You're well-known, popular. Oh, well, yes. It would be a step up. Yeah, it would. Throckmorton, you could easily be our next sheriff. What do you think about it? There's nothing wrong with thinking about it. Splendid. Of course, if I'm sheriff, I'll have to have this front seat fixed. Self-respecting lawbreakers wouldn't ride in this car. Yeah. Is that you, Aunt? Yes, Leroy. You're home early. Well, Irene was a little tired tonight. Of you? <laughs> of course not. My dates never get tired of me. Ah! <laughs> Only kidding. What are you doing up? I just finished my homework. Uh, good boy. What do you say we go raid Bertie's refrigerator? I'm way ahead of you, Unc. You get some plates. I'll get out the food. Okay. This is a kind of a reward, Leroy, for you doing your homework. It isn't that I'm hungry. Oh, no. Oh, boy, do those chicken wings look good. Neither I got you in my refrigerator. Oop, Bertie caught us. You didn't catch me. You're in the refrigerator. 
Why, Mr. Gilsey. Uh, just counting the chicken wings. <laughs> Here, let me dish it up for you. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Pile up the place, Bertie. As long as we're caught, let's make it worthwhile. Yeah. Well, we won't do this again. You home early, Miss Gilsey. Yeah, Miss Henshaw was tired after a meeting at the women's club. They're looking for a sheriff. What's the matter? Did they get robbed? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just happens that there's no likely candidate for sheriff this fall. No, sir? Why don't they get somebody from out of town, like Roy Rogers? <laughs> well, believe it or not, Miss Henshaw suggested I become sheriff. You? I believe it. I don't. Why not? Well, gosh, I just always think of you as water commissioner. Well, that was my first reaction. But being a sheriff is a bigger job. Yes, sir, that's a big job. Sheriff Gildersleeve. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Imagine, my uncle, a sheriff. Can I carry your handcuffs? <laughs> Not so fast, my boy. I haven't even decided to run. Unc, you got to run. I can see you on a horse now, leading parades. Well... Yes, sir, and your picture would be in the paper every few days with dignitaries and people like that. Oh, I've had my picture in the paper, Bertie. Yeah, but you just happened to be holding the mayor's coat while he laid a cornerstone. <laughs> well, I'll admit, being sheriff is a glamorous, exciting kind of job. Hey, you didn't even have a siren on your car. You bet. <laughs> Boy, would I blast the kids when we went by. We'd only use the siren in emergencies. Then you're going to run, Mr. Gilsey? Well, if enough people want me, like the women do. I'm behind you, Unc. Me too. Yeah, I might talk to Bronco in the morning, get him to feel out his organization. It's active in politics. Sure. Get the junior thinkers behind you. Right, George, I'll do it. Tell them if they don't support you, they're not thinkers, they're... <laughs> About to leave for the office. I think I'll step across and speak to him now. You know, I'm going to run for sheriff. It won't hurt to have my niece's husband get the junior thinkers behind me. Good morning, Bronco. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Can I give you a ride to town this morning, Bronco, my boy? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, we go to work in different directions. Well, I thought I might drive you out to the plant. We could talk about things. Oh, thanks. No, I'll need my car today. Oh, what's on your mind? Well, it's election year, you know. I've been giving a lot of thought to possible candidates I'll support. All of us should. Oh? Yeah, that goes for me, you, and splendid organizations like your junior thinkers. Oh, don't you worry. Huh? We've been putting the candidates under the microscope. Good for you. When you were looking in the microscope, you didn't happen to see a likely candidate for sheriff wiggling around, did you? No, that's wide open. You're still president, aren't you? This is my third term. Yeah, those thinkers know what they're doing. Oh, well, I will say I had very little opposition after my first term and none for my third. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you should have seen it. The Elks Club Banquet Hall was full of junior thinkers, and I was elected by acclamation. Yeah, standing ovation. And in my acceptance speech, I told them, fellow thinkers... Yeah, wait, 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 I... what, Bronco, wait a minute. We aren't talking about thinkers. We're talking about the next sheriff. You what? I was about to say, as a popular president, you might be able to make a strong recommendation. Oh, yes, I could. Yeah, of course, you couldn't recommend somebody you don't know well. Oh, no. Yeah, you have too much principle for that. So you might play it safe and uh, recommend a relative. Uh, who? Well, think hard. Who's in the public eye and knows what's going on at City Hall? My cousin Tom, the window washer? He Bronco, you're joking Well, the only other relative I can think of who's in the public eye is you Yeah? Yeah, and I can't imagine that Oh, no. oh Sheriff Gildersleeve Oh, that's very... <laughs> What's so funny? Well, it's just that I know you'd never run for sheriff Oh, you're too set in the waterworks Well, on the contrary, I'm seriously thinking of running The women's club has practically endorsed me Oh, they have? Yeah, at least Miss Henshaw has. 
Well, I didn't realize you'd given some thought to this. You bet. Yeah, how about mentioning me to the junior thinkers? I know today is your meeting day. Well, I'll be glad to, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'll give you a big build-up. Great. Uh, see you later. Uh, Bronco. Yeah? After I'm sheriff. Don't let me catch you parked so close to that fire plug. I don't have to worry. The sheriff's my relative. <laughs> I'll stop in and see Peavy. He'll be surprised to hear I'm running for sheriff. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Well, you can vote for me, Peavy. How's uh, yeah? that? And Mrs. Peavy can vote for me. Uh, I wouldn't count on Mrs. Peavy. What? She never votes for a pig in a poke. <laughs> what are you saying? Well, we don't know what you're running for. Well, they're plugging me for sheriff. Well, that's a good way to get plugged. <laughs> oh, Phoebe, you're thinking of the old Western days. The modern sheriff is more of an executive. Mm, yes. Of course, I'd have to head up all the parades and be in the news a lot. Well, I imagine you'd be in the news. Yeah, I'd have to make public appearances... Like uh, getting in theaters and ball games free to keep my eyes on things. Well, if you need an extra private eye, I'll go to the ball games with you any day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what kind of a sheriff do you think I'd make? You haven't expressed yourself. Do I have to? <laughs> no, Peavy, I want your opinion. When do you want me to speak as a friend or tell you the truth? Peavy, the truth never hurt anybody. <laughs> oh. Well, I think the water commissioner would make a pleasant type sheriff. Yeah, you do? Instead of a six-shooter, you could carry a water pistol. <laughs> You'd be very popular with criminals. Yeah, all right, you have your fun. But the women's club is behind me. Bronco's lining up the junior thinkers. I have absolutely no opposition. You don't say. So it has to be a landslide for me. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Bronco. Bronco! Oh, I thought that was your car parked out front, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah, how did things go at the Junior Thinker's luncheon? Well, I wanted to be the first to tell you. Yeah, naturally. Bronco, I just might find an honorary sheriff's badge for you. I get to go to the ball game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll all have a lot of fun. Now, when I'm sheriff... Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, let me finish. Oh, yeah, you proceed, my boy. Well, I spoke to the junior thinkers, and they don't think much of your chances. Well, I knew they'd have it. What? Yeah, well, everything went along fine until they asked what your qualifications were. <laughs> yeah, I reminded them of what a fine job you've done in the water department. Yes, yes. But they want a crusader. A crusader? Yeah. Well, we kicked around a lot of names, and we decided to back a woman for sheriff. A woman sheriff? Oh, man, well, they got him in Texas. <laughs> Bronco, who's the woman? Mr. Gildersleeve, the junior thinkers are supporting Mama Hubbard. Mama Hubbard? You mean the one who operates the driving? Yeah, you know, we figure she'll make a real two-fisted candidate. She's quite a woman. PB, you know a woman wouldn't make a better sheriff than I would. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. There's always something new coming out of the famous Kraft Kitchens. And right now it's a wonderful new all-purpose oil. Your grocer has it. New Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. The Kraft folks have a special reason for playing up the words all-purpose on their new oil. Unlike oils that are at their best for just one or two uses, new Kraft oil is blended right for everything. The Kraft kitchens have tested new Kraft oil in scores of ways and recommend it for all your deep frying and pan frying, for all your favorite homemade salad dressings, 
for any baking or pastry recipe that calls for liquid shortening. When you make cakes, cookies, and quick breads with new craft oil, you pour your shortening from a bottle instead of scooping it out of a can. Measuring is exact and easy. And wait till you discover the tender crust new craft oil gives to French fried foods. They're never soggy and hard to digest. The label on every craft oil bottle has an exclusive zip-out window. When you pull off this little tab, you can see when your supply of oil is running low. It's a great convenience. Next time you're shopping, be sure to get new craft oil. It's perfect for deep frying and pan frying, for baking and salad dressings. Wonderful new craft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. <laughs> at a very even tenor for the great Gildersleeve until somebody suggested he run for sheriff. The more he thought about the idea, the better he liked it. It looked like a breeze with no competition. Then a lady candidate appeared on the scene and his support began to crumble. You mean Bronco and his junior thinkers aren't going to support you, Walt? Yeah, they ran out on me, Leroy. Imagine a woman sheriff. She'll have doilies in the cells and ruffled curtains over the bars. No woman can beat you, Unc. Oh, I'm not worried about that, my boy. The water commissioner is too well known around here. Well, sure. You can tell everybody if they don't vote for you, you'll cut off their water. <laughs> no, my boy. Excuse me. Yes, Bertie. I thought you were going to be sheriff. Oh, I am? That's not what it says here in the paper. What's that? The paper says Mama Hubbard's running against you. Oh, that doesn't mean she's going to be elected. Here's a picture right here. You publicity hound. Let me see it, Bertie. There's a strong jaw if I ever saw one. Oh, brother. A great stone face. <laughs> I got a cousin who works in one of her drive-ins. He tells me Mama Hubbard keeps them happy. Yeah? Yeah, I hear she runs them with an iron hand. Yes, sir. They tell me she was a top kick in the wax. She was? Yes, sir. Now, every morning she lines up all the kitchen help for inspection. Oh, my goodness. My cousin was late one morning, so she put him on KP. Huh. He didn't mind. KP was his job anyway. <laughs> well, I don't think being a sheriff is a job for a woman. I just might go down and suggest she withdraw. Yeah? yeah? I'd be doing her a favor if I pointed out the pitfalls of politics. Yes, sir. She's been a successful drive-in operator. She should stick to her last. Yes, sir. Tell her to stick to making hot dogs instead of making it hot for the water commission. No, Bertie. Mr. Gillespie, you know what you want her to stick to? You yeah. have. That's right, making hot dogs instead of making it hot for the water commission. <laughs> I should have gone home to Mrs. Peavy when I closed the pharmacy, Mr. Gildersleeve. You, well, Peavy, I want Mama Hubbard to see the high-type supporters I have. <laughs> Thank you. Her office is right in back here. Nice place she's got. I wonder why she wants to play policeman. Well, we're going to talk her out of it. Well, I'm here to tell you. I've always felt a woman's place is in the home. At least that's where I try to keep Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> yeah. Step in, Peavy. The girl said to wait for Mama here in the office. Yeah, well. So, hey, there's her picture on the wall. My, my, no wonder we won the war. <laughs> hey, careful, Peavy, I hear her coming. Well, let her come. I'm not afraid of her. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Hubbard. Yeah, or is it Miss? Call me Mama. Well, Mama, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. I know. And this is my friend and one of my supporters, Mr. Peavy. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Peavy? I'm pleased to meet you, Mama. If you're backing Mr. Gildersleeve, I won't waste one of my cards on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mrs. Hubbard, uh, Mama, I thought I'd come down for a friendly chat in case we became political opponents. We are opponents. You, well, uh, perhaps after you've given a little more thought to opposing me... 
You'll be happy just staying in the hot dog business. The <laughs> drive-in business. What's so tough about opposing you? Could you be worse than Okinawa? <laughs> <laughs> but being sheriff doesn't seem quite the job for a woman. What's the matter with women? Yo, know, nothing. No, don't misunderstand me. I'm all for him. Yeah, he is. You, me too. <laughs> what I mean is, the office requires a big executive. Somebody with a plan of action. What are your plans, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, first I plan to get elected. Oh? No. You mean that's as far as you've gone? Well, first things first. Can't do anything until you get elected. Well, you must have some plans, don't you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, oh, just a minute. I don't tell everything I know. Well, gentlemen, when I'm elected, I plan to bring about some long-needed reform. I'm going to flush out the law violators like a covey of quail. Mm, she would, too. <laughs> I'm going to make the highways and streets in our fair city and county safe for our women and children. Mm, Mrs. Peavy will be glad to hear that. <laughs> well, uh... I, I plan. To... You haven't a plan, and you know it, uh, Mister Peavy. Why are you supporting Mister Gildersleeve? Mm, I'm beginning to wonder. Peavy. <laughs> um, if, if you'll excuse me, I have to get one more signature to put my name on the ballot. Uh, uh, Mama Hubbard. Uh, yes. I'd be proud to put my name on your petition. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to have to fight for this sheriff's job. I've lost Bronco and his stupid junior thinkers. Even Peavy got carried away. Yeah, I hope Irene's home. It's about time we have a strategy meeting. Fortunately, I still have the women's club behind me, and they're the biggest organization in town. Oh, hello, Strockmorton. Yeah, hello, Irene. May I come in? Uh, I have someone here from the women's club. Yeah, well, I don't want to interrupt. We can talk here in the hall if you have a moment. Of course. Yeah, Irene, you remember the sales talk you gave me the other night about running for sheriff? Uh, well... The need uh, for a strong, vigorous crusader? Yes, yes, I tried to phone you about that, but you haven't been in the water department all day. Oh, well, I take my political job seriously. I've been out electioneering. Yeah, I think I should tell you, though, we've had a little setback. Oh? Yeah, I thought we could count on the junior thinkers, but they say they're going to support another candidate. Uh, Throckmorton, if I were you, I'd give up the idea of running for sheriff. Oh, no, not me. I'm going to fight to the last vote. Now, if you girls would like to call another meeting, I'd like to appear before you and accept your endorsement. Uh, Throckmorton, this hurts me more than it does you. What? The women's club has decided to support one of its own members. You mean Mama Hubbard is one of your members? Yes. And you're going to vote for her? I'm sorry, Throckmorton. You weren't sure you were going to be a candidate. Mrs. Hubbard is a charter member of the Women's Club. What does that have to do with it? That old biddy was a charter member of the Lewis and Clark Expedition, but doesn't mean you have to vote for her. Commissioner, who are you calling an old biddy? Oh, Mama! <laughs> You know, I have to go to Mama Hubbard's. The newspapers want a picture of us together, Leroy. No kidding. You're going to have your picture taken with her? Well, I can't say no. It's their way of presenting both candidates. Uh, hand me that tie, my boy. The one with the mermaids on it? No, the plain black one. I get it. The voters might not go for a candidate with mermaids hanging around his neck. Well, I'm afraid they aren't going for me anyway. Tough, Unc. Excuse me, I've got your coat, sir. Oh, I'm coming, Bertie. How about me shining your shoes before you go? Uh, thanks, I haven't time. Miss Gilbert, I heard on the radio this morning that the women's club is behind Mama Hubbard. Yeah, I caught her at Irene's yesterday trying to sew up the votes. What a sneaky thing to do. Yeah, you thought of it first. I'm still voting for you, Mr. Gilsey. Bronco says he's voting for you no matter what the junior thinkers do. Well, that's three votes. Who's the other one? Me. Poor <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, I've got a good notion to withdraw from the race. Honk. And be the laughing stock of town? 
Not necessarily, Leroy. You know, I've been thinking about it. I could just turn this picture to my advantage. Yeah? Right, George, I'll do it. What? Instead of posing as a candidate, I'll just shake Mama's hand and say, I'm too much of a gentleman to run against a woman in a mudslinging political race. Nobody can argue with that. Yes, sir, that'll get me out gracefully. Yeah, I can just see the headlines. Water Commissioner refuses to make political capital at expense of frail woman. Mama Hubbard is frail? (laughs) Well, at least it's a good idea. Right, George, I'd like to be sheriff. But I just don't stand a chance. This is my only way to save face. Just bow out. I wonder if the photographer's here yet. Hello, Commissioner. Hello, Joe. Are you going to take the pictures? Yeah. Wish Mama Hubbard would show up. I have a deadline. Yeah, she's probably powdering her nose. Mama Hubbard? (laughs) Joe, I think I should tell you, this isn't going to be the kind of picture you came here to take. Oh? Well, I've decided the thing for me to do is to leave the field to Mama Hubbard. Coward. No, 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 no. I'm not a coward. You just take a picture of me shaking her hand and wishing her good luck. Okay. She's going to be a hard-boiled sheriff. Well, hello, boys. Hello, Mama. Now, Mama, why don't you and the commissioner stand right over there by the chair? All right. You should have been around with your camera last night. I had a press conference and served sandwiches. Yeah? I haven't had a chance to clean up the place. Yeah, well, Mama, if you're ready... We'll stand here by the chair and I'll... Oh, let me toss these paper plates in the wastebasket. Tidy up for the picture. There we are. Please, what's the matter? There's a mouse in the wastepaper basket. A mouse? Well, so what? Go down off the chair. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, do something! But I, I... He can't. You've got him around the neck. Don't worry, Mama. I'll protect you. Oh, boy. Hold it. What? That's the picture. Don't press that. I may be sheriff after all. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. Some cooking and salad oils are good for one use and not so good for others. But new Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening is perfect for everything. New Kraft oil is so truly all-purpose, you use it every day for pan frying and deep frying, for all recipes calling for liquid shortening, and, of course, for homemade salad dressing. Tomorrow, be sure to get a bottle of wonderful new Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. <laughs> I guess you noticed that Mama Hubbard has decided not to run for sheriff. Yes, sir. Looks like you're going to be sheriff after all. Well, Summerfield needs a man who isn't going to run from a mouse. <laughs> right, George, I'm going to clean up things. I'll chase the lawbreaker right across the county line. Yes, sir. Bertie, you see this in the paper? What's that? Summerfield bank robbed last night. Two gunmen still at large. Uh-oh. Hey, uh! Yes, Leroy? Outside. He wants you to be a deputy. Me? He knows where those two gunmen are hiding out, and he wants you to help bring them in. Why me? He says you need the experience. Uh, I've had experience. Capturing gunmen? Running the water department, and that's where I'm staying. Good night, folks. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Gail Bonney, Olin Soule, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Easton saying goodnight for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great 
Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with craft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild craft mustard and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network. 